All right, you're still watching Tea or Coffee, and we are discussing travel this morning. All right, on this morning, on <laughs> we're discussing travel this morning, and now we're actually going to be talking about um, landmarks around the world. Now, a landmark usually forms the identity of a city, a place, yeah. You know, it forms the identity of a particular state. It forms the identity of a you know particular country. Now, you know, um, the one. The landmark of Lagos, a landmark, you know, of Lagos is actually the third mainland bridge. Bridge, yeah. yeah. Um, another one that is very notable, um, that is that actually has like now like a symbol to it, is actually the Ikoi Link Bridge. Oh, okay. With the, yeah, know, that so that's that's a landmark, landmark in Lagos. Another one can be the MK Abiola um, statue that you know that you see when you're coming into Lagos. Uh, one of my favorite landmarks, but I think they've taken it down now. Um, you know, on the way to Badagri, um, on Shongo Tedo mm. Road, there's this fish. <laughs> there's this big fish. <laughs> no, is it just one? I think there are yeah, many yeah, I think, fishes, I think it's like... like they, they, anyway, there's this massive fish. I used to love seeing that. <laughs> <laughs> that particular landmark, but I think they've taken it down now. Um, so, you know, a landmark, you know, usually anchors the identity of a, of a state, um, of, of a city, to it. So when you Not think... even just the state, oh, actually. Even mm. businesses. I feel like businesses... You know, okay, so um, how do I put this now? The image of a business is very, very important. Mm. So say, for example, you can easily attract, I don't know, clients to your mm. workspace yeah. if you can easily um, direct them. Right. You know, it's more like you're telling them that, okay, so when you're coming to this space, you will see this particular place... Like, that particular thing All that you're right. using to describe yeah. to them is, like, a landmark to yeah. your business that yeah. is unique to your business. Yeah. And it's also very important. And plus, even most tourists, they have a particular yeah. landmark that, that they're they... using at attracting tourists and so, all of that. Yeah, so, landmark, yeah. this conversation is actually very, yeah. very important. You know, and then there are particular landmarks that they are so... Um, they are so fan they're so fantabulous. <laughs> Let me use that word. They are so, um, you know, they're so extravagant. They are so big. You know, yeah, you Huge. know, I don't want to use Massive. big. I don't. I feel like big as an adjective doesn't really <laughs> capture. So okay. You know, they are so very eye catching and very like they give you this. For example, mm. when you're coming to our Impact Planet Amusement Park uh -huh, and Resort, yes, that for yes. me. I don't know. Some people might eat, they might feel like it's the elephant yes. outside the the street, but I just feel like it's the Ferris wheel. It's the Ferris it is wheel. so massive, and yeah. you can see it from a long yeah. distance. Yeah. Anytime I'm coming to work, you know, and I see that Ferris wheel, I feel like I'm already. There home. was a there was a time Actually. that there was a time that I almost missed road, <laughs> like they almost like yeah. they took me. Yeah. And, and and the driver was like, "Don't worry, you've not gotten there. Don't worry, you've not gotten there." I'm like. I believe I've passed. And I just look back. I have seen the Ferris wheel. Ah, uh, no, know. driver, stop. <laughs> that, that is our landmark. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, another one um, is actually the big elephant. Yeah, that's what I do. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah, it's yeah. Very it's, easy. it's the Ferris The first one is big, but, but you know, the first one is big. But the elephant is, yeah. Um, one that's also people would usually take notes of is a big elephant. It's actually which is very our mascot. cute. Yeah. And, you know, you know, the same way the elephant, you know, the big elephant, which is the mascot of High Impact Planet, yeah. is the same way that. You know, landmarks form a form of mascots for a particular oh, yes, city. Yes. You know, so for instance, in, in France, in Paris, we're going to look at it anyway, it's the Eiffel Tower. Eiffel Tower, you know, yeah. So if you're going to buy like souvenirs and stuff like this from, from Paris, from France, they'll probably give you a souvenir in front of the Eiffel Tower. Mm. You know, so it, it, acts, it really anchors the identity um, of a country, you know, of a city to of that place, particular, of yeah, we place to that particular, um, you know, um, icon. So we're going to be looking at different landmarks, yes, around the world. Okay, and the very first one we have here is the Eiffel Tower in Paris. Uh, this metal tower with three floors stands in the city center of Paris. It was built for the um, 1889 World Fair to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the French Revolution. The 324 meters or 1,062 feet high Eiffel Tower was constructed by, the Augustan Eif by August Eiffel and a team of engineers. 
if you would like to take the, um, the steps up to the tower viewing platforms on the second floor, there are 704 steps to climb. Wow. But luckily, there are also lifts in each of the leg up to the second floor. All right. So, um, just like Adia said. Okay, so remember this conversation that we were having on um, places you would like to travel when, um, you know, it's much more safer to travel. And I remember you, you said something that the reason as to why you would even want to visit Paris in the first place is because of this Eiffel Tower. Yes or no? <laughs> you know, so yeah, it's, it's the Eiffel Tower is, and I think what fascinates me about the Eiffel Tower is the fact that aside from the height, because it is extremely high, 162 um, feet, uh, that's extremely high. And you can see it from a distance, you know, even if you're a visitor. But I think what fascinates me about it is the fact that, you know, it has, how do I put it now? It has so many steps. And for each step, definitely, there's a point you get to on the Eiffel Tower, though I've not been there, I'm just saying, there's a point you get to on the Eiffel Tower that you need an elevator. You cannot, like, mm. go on here, except you want to look like toothpick at the end of the day. And aside that, I heard that it's also, um, it was beautiful, like, over two years. Right. Two good years. It is amazing, really. Uh, I, I, I just feel like the first floor, according to what I read, is where you, you have the, uh, what's it called now, restaurants, is where you have, um, I think, recreational centers too. You can get them there at the Eiffel Tower and all of that. You have so many amazing things. Each floor has its own unique uniqueness, things that are, are specific for that floor. And the Eiffel Tower has three, right. three floors, actually. So according to research, the very last floor, like the top floor, is where um, Mr. Eiffel, okay. Mr. Eiffel's apartment is. You know, how amazing is okay. that? And then the very first stop, like as you can see, you would see uh, the, what's the code now? I've forgotten the name. Ah. Maybe when what's I that? remember, yeah. the uh, antenna, like okay. the long, what's it called? Yeah. yeah, for television and radio. Okay, okay, okay. That makes <laughs> it even much more taller. Yeah. And all of that. But you know, before this, I think before this, the tallest um, tower was the uh, Washington Monument. Ah, uh, right. And then this actually. And then other things started coming up and yeah. all of that. I mean, interesting, really. Okay. Interesting. All right. All and right. because of this, I think I'll really like to visit Paris. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I can go to the very top. Yeah. To show you that uh -huh, I'm not so right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the next um, landmark we have this morning um, is actually the Great Wall of China. Um, so the Great Wall of China is one of the seven wonders of the world. It runs in sections over a very long distance across China. The wall is also re referred to as Long Wall as it is over 21,196 wow. kilometers, um, which also adds up to 13,171 miles long. It was built with stones, bricks, and tiles, earth as well as of wooden material. The wall was completed in 1644, but it took more than 2,000 years to build. There are more than 20,000 watchtowers along the wall, and it was built to protect the country against invasions, from nomads and enemies, and to make it easier to collect duty goods that were transported along the Silk Road. This, I definitely want it's to actually, have a It's actually, it's one at. of the seven wonders of the world. Yes. Like, it is amazing. How they were, and said, they, they, and they, 2,000 years. 2,000 years, years. that is so commitment. Dude, that's like 20 centuries. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's <laughs> just amazing. That's mind-blowing. Yeah. You know, but it's amazing. I think... So, you know, I used to watch these things in a movie, and in my mind, I'm like, how on earth did they even mm. come about this? But now that I'm reading it up and it says that it took 2,000 years, now I can see why they came about it. And the reason as to why they even had to, you know, put up that wall was because of invaders, raiders, and all of that. So, I think this is, it's a very, funny enough, just looking at it right now, it doesn't feel high, you know, but it's actually very tall. Yeah. Interesting, indeed. Yeah. All right. All right, let's move on to the next one. And... The next one here says um, Kremlin in Russia. The Grand Kremlin Palace is part of the Kremlin complex and is located next to the Red Square and St. Bezius Cathedral in Russia's capital city, Moscow. 
The Kralin is a fortress with enclosing walls and, and it's built along with the Muska River. The name Kralin means fortress within a city. The more than 500 years old Kralin includes the wall with its 20 towers as well as four churches and five palaces and five palaces within the walls. The Kralin was once the residence of the Teasers. Today, it is where the Russian president res resides. The Cathedral of Vasily and Blessed, usually referred to St. Basil's Cathedral, is usually recognized due to its nine brightly colored onion domes. Yeah, it's Kremlin. Cre it's Kremlin. The, you you Krem say the M, yeah, Kremlin. Kremlin. Yeah, Kremlin. It looks colorful, by the way. Yeah. Very colorful. Yeah, it is. It does. It's, to be honest, it's the first <laughs> the time I'm hearing about it. Really? I'm serious. Yeah, this is another one that I'll actually like to see. Look at that. It's, um, look at that. Well, it's not part of the Ooh. seven wonders of the world, right? No, I don't think so. No, I is don't it? think so. No, I don't think so. <laughs> but, you know, it's but actually... It's, it's so attractive, actually. Just looking at it, you want to visit there. Like, you would actually want it's, to and go And it's more there. than 500 years old. Like, it's... Wow, uh, amazing. There are a lot of things that, you know, when you jump... At times, when you dig back to history... There are some things that would amaze you, mm. you know, that would interest you, that will make you want to visit that place just because of that particular landmark. Yeah. And that is why we are taking this conversation, yeah. you know, landmarks around the world. And this is definitely one of the biggest landmarks yeah. in the world. Yeah, it's actually, it's, it's, uh, it's one of the strong identities of Russia. When of you Russia, think, yeah. When you think about Russia... This comes to mind. Think of the Kremlin. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. All right. So the next um, landmark that we've given to you this morning is the Leaning Tower of Pisa in Italy. The Leaning Tower of Pisa is one of Italy's major tourist attractions. The freestanding bell tower of the Pisa Cathedral was built over almost 200 years and was finished in 1399. The original height of the tower was 60 meters, but as it is leaning, the lower side is now less than 56 meters. The construction caused many problems at the time as the soil was soft, sandy, and unstable. During, uh, during construction, the builders tried to balance the leaning side with more columns on the underside, but the, but the tower still leaned, like many other buildings in the area. In 2000, the, t the tower was strengthened by putting stronger oil underneath the tower. You can walk up the 251 stairs to the viewing platform at the top of the tower, which is quite an amazing experience. I have actually seen wow. this. Um, so you can see that it's actually bent a bit. Yeah, yeah. I have seen the pizza. The so according to what I read, the foundation was not, was not, the foundation was the problem mm, yeah. of this particular yeah. tower. And there's actually a, like a, there's a mast mm. in the center of this tower that yeah. actually holds it. Right. Even though it's still bent a bit, that mast, I think it's on the fourth floor yeah. there, but it, it reaches the fourth floor, mm -hmm. basically. It's mm -hmm. from, the very, um, from the very bottom to the fourth floor, mm -hmm. and that's what's actually holding this tower a little bit. Even though, yeah, scientists, they've been able to, you know, level the um, tower a bit so it can stand, yeah. but trust me, <laughs> I'm just trying to imagine if that mast moves from the center, mm. What would happen? It's a um, it's a cultural heritage, so you know I'm sure they are doing everything they can to actually protect it. Another one of my favorite landmarks in um, what's it called in Italy is actually the Colosseum in Rome. Mm -hmm. it okay. is, so the Colosseum, um, the history behind the Colosseum is that it was a fighting arena mm -hmm. for you know warriors for the gladiators. You know oh, they okay. come there. And then they put on a show for the crowd of people. It was a spectator sport, you know, a spectator. Uh, when, where they, where they, it was like the football of today's age, you know. So, um, it's, uh, so the Colosseum, obviously, and then it got destroyed over, um, you know, as a result of wars and whatnot. Uh, okay. So it's actually still standing. It's, mm. very, it's very much still standing. Part of it has crumbled. Um, but, you know, it's one of my favorite um, 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 landmarks. In Italy, very fascinating. But I think this very particular one right now is like is the major um, landmark in Italy. in Italy. I believe. So. I would think it's called the Colosseum. Mm. But you actually. just said that it was destroyed. No, no, no. It's still standing. No, it's no. Still I mean, standing. Like, no, you know, when I say destroyed, they they they, they stop using it. And, oh, you know, okay. As, yeah. Not you know, that, at some point, even this particular down. one mm. was like they had to like stop um, people from yeah. assessing yeah. the tower. Yeah, you can. People can still go to the Colosseum. 
you know, you can still go up and go inside and, you know, see what, you know, the history yeah. behind it and whatnot. All right. So the next one, do you want to take the next one? The next one here is the Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt. Okay, the Great Pyramid of Giza near Cairo is one of the seven wonders. Okay, this is one of the seven wonders of the ancient world and the only one of these ancient world wonders which still exists. The pyramids are made of stone and bricks and stand near Cairo, which is the capital of Egypt. The Egyptian pyramids were built during a time when there was only manual labor and no machine lifting equipment available. The pyramids were built to house the bodies of the pharaoh who ruled in, Egypt, in ancient Egypt. Next to the Giza pyramid is the Snephic, is the Sphinx, which is the famous monument of a lion body with um, a lion body with pharaoh's head. The Giza pyramids are around 4,500 years old and are considered among the largest structures ever built. Okay, <laughs> so this is actually cool and I've only seen this in movies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's especially, I can't remember the movie now. I really can't remember, but I've only seen this in movie. And I used to wonder what actually birthed this entire um, pyramid. Mm. It's actually a very interesting one to see a pyramid constructed like this uh, with, um, you know, the image right in front of it, which according to this write-up says is Pharaoh's head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how, how interesting you is that? You know, there are pyramids in Nigeria as well. Okay. Actually, there are pyramids around the world. Around the world. Yeah. Um, they just, you know, the ones in Egypt are just more... Um, they're bigger. They're much more spectacular. Mm. The ones in Nigeria are smaller. Yeah. The ones in other parts of the world, they are much smaller compared. So they were, I think, um, you know, they, they are they actually, they are, they are tombs for royalties. For royalties, yeah. You know, that's where they in bury, Egypt, you know, yeah. their, their, their kings and whatnot. Um, I think the same thing applies to the pyramids in Nigeria and the ones mm. around the world. I think so. I think they are also tombs. I'm not sure about I'm those I'm talking ones. about the one in but Nigeria But the ones now. in... Yeah, I'm not sure. But the ones in um, Egypt, they are actually tombs. Tombs, you know, yeah. For, and, you know, they bury them, they bury these kings and queens with slaves. You know, so it's like, a, it's a whole event. It's a whole thing. Like, it's a whole... Like, it's more like a tradition. <laughs> yeah, Egypt. like, it's a whole, like, festival of a funeral. Like, you know, where tons of people also die with the royalty so that they can have slaves in the afterlife. Fascinating. Mm. COVID-19 is still out there. Yes, the travel bans still restricted on a number of countries, but we're getting you ready for when it, those, those bans are lifted and you decide to pack your bags and go on a lovely trip. So there are some destinations here. We've taken um, the Eiffel Tower in Paris, um, the Great Wall of China, the Kremlin in Russia, um, and the Leaning, the Leaning Tower of Pisa in Italy, and the Great Pyramid of Giza in Italy. Egypt. Um, our next landmark this morning is the Sydney Opera House in Australia. And now the Sydney Opera House, built in Australia's biggest city, is famous for its roofs architecture res resembling shells or sails. The Opera House was designed by John Utzon from Denmark and it was built between 1959 and 1973. The roof is covered with more than one million roof tiles. They were manufactured these were manufactured in Sweden. The Opera House has several performance halls and theater and exhibition spaces. More than 40 shows are staged here every week and the roof is lit up in a colorful spectacle every evening. Yes, so when you think about Sydney, actually, this is what comes to my mind. Actually, you know, when I think about Australia, generally, as a matter of fact, you know, you know obviously I think about the Aboriginals, but then after the Aboriginals, what comes to my mind is the Opera House. You know, this, um, it's fascinating to actually look at, you know, and, you know, and the fact that they made it, obviously it's a, it's a house, it's a space for um, hosting creative exhibitions yeah, okay. and whatnot, but they've also done it in a way that it is a, it is a piece of art that just lights up the city. Fantastic, mm. fantastic. <laughs> All right, very fantastic. All right, and the next one that we have here is the Statue of Liberty in the United States of America. The Statue of Liberty is 92 meters, 305 feet high, and is made of a high end structure with copper skin. Lady Liberty, as the statue is often referred to, 
was designed by Frederick Auguste Bartholdi. The massive iron skeleton of the lady was designed by Alexander Gustav Eiffel, who also designed the Eiffel Tower. The statue was built and completed in France in 1884. The monument was then dissembled into 350 pieces and packed into 214 crates, then shipped to New York. The Statue of Liberty was a gift of the people of France to the American people on the American Centennial in 1886. The touched flame is covered with 24 karat gold and the crown has seven rays for the seven continents. The monument stands on Liberty Island in the Hudson River facing New York City. You can climb up the 154 steps from the, from the pedestal to the head of the statue where you can see the fantastic view over the Big Apple as New York is often lovingly called. Yeah. This is amazing. Yeah. Do you know that the guy that designed the um, um, Statue of Liberty, of Liberty actually used his mother as a model? Ah. Yeah, so, you know, for Lady Liberty, um, the artist, I think the name is um, Frederick Auguste Bartholdi. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. No, no that's no, no. the name of the... Designed by Alexandra Gustav. Yes, Alexander, that's the guy. Yeah. Alexander Gustav Eiffel. He used his mother as a model for Lady Liberty. That's also the same person that designed the Eiffel Tower. Yeah, yeah, very fascinating. Um, so, you know, you know, and I like this, what's this particular, you know, um, landmark represents because it represents peace. Yes. It represents freedom. It represents friendship between, you know, the um, France and the United States of America. America. It represents a bond, you know. And it was a time, it was during the time of war that this was given as a gift to the United States of America yeah. by France. So it's, a, it's, it's, you know, it's a... It's very monumental for a number of the reasons, things, you know, yeah. for a number of reasons. And, you know, because, you know, also America is known as, you know, the land, the land of the free and things like that, which is, which is quite debatable anyway. But, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, um, you know, what it represents, it represents yeah. freedom, it represents, you know, liberty and a liberal society. I mean, all society. of these things, all of these statues, all of these landmarks have been there for a very long time. Yeah. So at the time it was put up there. It still represents, you yeah. know, it connotes that yeah. that purpose, the reason that's why it was put up there in yeah. the first place, you know. And even now, really, to be honest, yes, it's <laughs> yes, I said that it's quite dependable, but I mean, they have their reason as to why yeah. it is still a landmark, yes. you know. Yes. All right. So the next one we have is actually coming from India, and this is the the Taj Mahal in India. So the Taj Mahal, which means crown of places. Is the Pers in the Persian language stands on the river banks of the Yamuna River in Agra in northern India. In, in 1632, the Emperor Shah Jahan instructed to build a tomb for his favorite wife, Mumtaz Mahal. The Taj Mahal houses the tomb of the wife as well as a mosque and a guest house. The Taj Mahal has been built with white marble and the finest materials sourced from all over e Asia. It is decorated with precious and semi-precious stones. Lines from the Quran, Quran are also de depicted on many walls. The main dome of the Taj Mahal is 35 meters, 115 feet in height, and the, and the minarets are each 40 meters and 100 at 132 feet. It is said that more than 20,000 workers built the monument and over 1,000 elephants were used to help to help with the transport of the heavy material during construction. This was built in, this was built in um, 1632. So, you know, it makes sense that they were using elephants to carry, you know, all these heavy materials. I like that this is some form of love story. <laughs> mm. I like that it's some form of love story that is also a form of power play, you know, because he, this is apparently the tomb of, um, you know, Mumtaz Mahal, who was mm. a favorite wife of the Emperor Shah Jahan. So it's actually a love story. We're looking at, <laughs> like, like, a, like, like an, expression, an expression of love. love that has become a landmark of a country. Interesting. That's fascinating. Fascinating. <laughs> All right, I'm moving on to the next one. We have the Mohai on Easter Island, Chile. 
The Moai are huge statues on the Polynesian island Rapa Nui. The island is commonly called Easter Island and belongs to Chile. The Easter Island is more than 2,200 miles away from Chile in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. The island is created more than 900 carved stone figures between 1,250 and 1,500. Most of the stone figures with the oversized heads were built with, with tough stone and compressed volcanic ash. The figures weigh on average 14 tons, which is as much as two elephants. However, the size of the statues varies. There are, small, there are some smaller ones and some much bigger ones too. The heaviest stone figure weighs 82 tons and is 100 meters to 33 feet long and some are about 4 meters to 13 feet tall. Most of the islanders believe the huge stone statue represents their ancestors. Mm. Just take a look at this picture. I know. Fascinating. <laughs> this is really fascinating. Actually. I mean, the fact that they even said it represents their ancestors. I would love which to is see why this. I was, you know, when we were having that conversation on statue, I think it was on training topic, we yeah. took something like that. And a lot of people protesting about um, uh, how some certain statues should not be um, still on erect, you know. I just feel like some of these things, to be honest, they represent. It, it dates back to history. Do you understand? There's a reason as to why it's still there. And a lot of people attribute it to a whole lot of things. So just like this, I mean, it represents their culture. Imagine somebody coming and saying they want it removed. I get what you mean, Kimi, but this is different. Those statues represent oppression. So no, okay. vandalism is always a no-go, but those the statues, these statues are, are beautiful, they, they are, to be honest. Know. But you also, but do you also know that this same stat um, these same statues that we are talking about, they are still landmarks to a lot of people mm. because we are still talking about landmarks anyways. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's just very important that at times, like when we're having that conversation, to me really, like yeah. you've already said, it's not about um, vandalism and all of that. A lot of people read meanings to these things. A lot of people read different meanings to mm. all of these statues, to all of these landmarks. And you're just coming out to say, oh, I want it removed simply because you're not cool with it. I really do not think that is right. But like you said, we're talking about um, beautiful... You know? Let's, let's, yeah, let's, <laughs> let's just... Stay, yeah, yeah, we're talking... Don't <laughs> let's go into it. I don't, don't, I'm talking about beautiful yeah. um, towers, beautiful pyramids across landmarks. the world. Beautiful landmarks, basically, around the world. And this is a very important, yes. a very, very nice one. It's, um, you know, it's prone to chili. It's a chili thing. Uh, yeah. And... It's seen as the statue of their ancestors. So, yeah, they are beautiful. Yeah. They look like wood, by the way. Yeah, but they're... Mm, they're, they're they look like they were made. Yeah. Look, look at, at it. That. Look at this particular one. Amazing. It looks like you just, you know, carved mm. the wood to look like the statues. But it's amazing, really. I can imagine the amount of work they, they you know, they put into preserving. And this just shows creativity, this, too. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's lovely. Okay, all right. So the next one we have this morning is from Peru, which is the Machu Picchu in Peru. The Machu Picchu, which means old mountain in the local Quechua language, is a famous site in Peru. It is also referred to as Lost City of Incas. The ruins of the Lost City are located in the mountains at more than 2,400 meters at 8,000 feet above sea level. The ruined site has more than 200 different buildings and structures. The ruins were never discovered by the European um, conquistadors, but only became known in 1911 when an American archaeologist was led to the site by locals. While some people believe that the Machu, the Machu Picchu was built on as a sacred site, others think it, was once, it once was the summer retreat of an Inca emperor. It was built during the 14th century and probably more than 1,000 people lived there. As the site is built on a mountain ridge and thus always would be in danger of sliding down the slope during the rainy season, over 600 terraces and a well-laid-out drainage were built around the city. That is what I call cultural um, heritage preservation. You know, they built a drainage around it. I mean, why would you want something as beautiful as this to get, you know, washed away by, 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 you know, by water or anything like this? 
you know, I go, they want to go extinct, you know, it's fascinating, you know. And that a lot of people don't even know the true origin is mm. what makes it even more interesting. <laughs> is what even makes it more interesting. Interesting. You know. It reminds me of those like you know those um those those cartoons where we watch um, you know, Lost City of Atlantis or something mm. like this. Yeah. Actually it does look like one. Yeah, but this is the lost city of the Incas. Yeah. Of the lost city <laughs> of the Incas. Yes. All right, so that's all we'll be taking <laughs> this morning on the landmarks around the world. You know, we're talking, we've been talking um, about travel this morning. We started with how to get comfortable um, in a plane for those long hour flights that you, that you, you, know, you probably partake in when the travel bans and COVID-19 dies down. Um, and now we've been giving you particular landmarks around the world. This is Tea or Coffee.